Well, that IEA projection gels with forecasts for increased demand for renewables. CNA's Ronan Lim has been covering the Energy Asia conference in Kuala Lumpur. He reports on what experts are saying about Asia's green energy push. The International Energy Agency reports that electricity demand in Southeast Asia jumped more than 7% in 2024 and said to keep rising around 4.5% annually. And China's power use, well, it grew about 7% last year, forecast to climb around 6% per year through to 2027. And that makes it imperative for Asia to scale renewables to cover more than a third of new demand by 2035, even as the region diversifies beyond gas and coal. Now, Su En Tan of the International Energy Agency believes that in order to meet that demand, investments in three areas are critical. One, the need to diversify our energy supply. Secondly, the importance of uh, regulatory certainty to encourage more investment in energy. And thirdly, the need for international cooperation. In a case specifically for fossil fuels for this region, we do see gas, for example, uh, continuing to grow uh, by about 30% between now and 2050 uh, for the Asia-Pacific region. So it will remain a critical uh, fuel source. But from an energy security angle, it is important to pursue as many different uh, energy sources uh, as possible, including, uh, very importantly, renewable uh, energy, which we see a lot of significant potential for in this region, up to 20 terawatts. And while gas continues to be a transition hydrocarbon fuel into 2050, the renewables are essential to balance security and sustainability, says Ms. Tan. But the broader economic backdrop is challenging. Miguel Fonseca of EDB Renewables points out that today's headwinds aren't unique to clean energy. I think that the, the slowdown is structural to all sectors in the sense that we are in a unstable geopolitical context with uh, rising interest rates so I think it's rough on all sectors it's not a particular thing of renewables I would say even quite the opposite if we take the example of China that has pushed a lot in renewables it's not because of just a green transition it's a way to isolate themselves from being dependent on oil imports and geopolitical instability so i think that regions need to understand that for safety purpose security national security but also for competitiveness in terms of cost renewables are a, a good ingredient and a, a natural and primordial ingredient so i do see some headwinds but are not specific to the sector i think that they are cross-sectorial I think there is some now dogmatism and political aspects coming into play, but in the end I see the investments and year-on-year -year estimates of how much renewables will be deployed keep being beaten because the technology is there in terms of economic terms and geopolitical terms make sense to invest. Now Mr. Fonseca leads one of the fastest growing renewable companies in the region and has overseen the deployment of thousands of megawatts of wind, solar and storage capacity across Southeast Asia. And for hard-to-abate sectors, hydrogen is top of mind. Now, Sushil Prohit of Gentari, the renewable arm of state-owned Malaysian oil giant Petronas, shared how his company is tackling the hydrogen puzzle. We are uh, pushing quite a bit uh, on the hydrogen side. We believe that hydrogen will uh, become a part of the energy system, system especially to uh, decarbonize hard-to-abate sectors. Um, we are uh, working in places where hydrogen can actually be produced at a reasonable cost. Um, India is clearly one of the places uh, where we are developing uh, hydrogen. We are also developing a hydrogen hub in Sarawak. We are also uh, developing projects in the peninsula side. So we are actually, you know, at this point of time developing uh, projects. But it is not only about developing any project, you need to make sure that you are able to optimize every single pieces of the puzzle to make hydrogen viable for the customers. And together these insights sketch a clear picture. Asia's renewable trends driven by the necessity to diversify beyond fossil fuels. At Energy Asia 2025, delegates are discussing policy frameworks to give investors confidence, exploring blended finance models and forging regional partnerships from cross-border grids to shared hydrogen corridors. The message? Asia must pursue an energy mix that secures supply today while scaling clean technologies for tomorrow. Roland Lim, CNA, Kuala Lumpur.